It's 2.30 in the morning. Our asses are sore. We're sleep deprived. And our clothes still smell like secondhand cigarette smoke. But today, the positive most definitely outweighs all the negatives. We are currently hiking up a volcano. Now we realize this isn't the best lighting to show you guys this, but this is the best way to give you context to exactly what you'll go through if you come up to Mount Egan and do this hike. We're currently situated very, very east on the island of Java in Indonesia. So a little backstory on how to get here. We came directly from Denpasar, which is the main city on the island of Bali. There is a bus that takes you all the way to Banyuwangi, which is the closest town to Mount Ijen. When you arrive at the bus station, you'll want to look for a bus labeled Jember. The first leg of the bus ride from Denpasar to Gilamanic is four hours. The total cost per person is 85,000 rupiah. Now this does include your fee to ride the ferry from Bali to Java. Once in Java, your bus will continue to drive in the direction of Jember, but you will need to get out in the town of Banyuwangi. From there, you'll likely need to find a hotel so you can store your things and organize a tour. Now, something important to note, we were going to do everything on our own, take a motorbike up, but when all is said and done, it actually ends up being around the same cost. We arrived the same evening, booked our tour for this very same night, Basically what happens is they pick you up around midnight and drive you to the base of Mount Ijen where they provide water, gas masks, and flashlights. Once the gates open, the hike begins in the pitch black and well, here we are. We're about to check out the world's largest acidic crater lake. We're also here for the infamous blue flame. Sounds like a strip club. Blue flame. <laughs> so the reason for the phenom of the blue flame is because there's so much sulfuric gas in this area and it's at such a high temperature and high pressure that it's when it's released it meets with oxygen and just bursts into a blue flame but the blue flame isn't totally unique to just this area you can find them in a few other parts of the world off the top of my head two spots or three spots that i know of are iceland italy and uh, ethiopia if i'm not mistaken if you're wondering what it's like to breathe down here it's nearly impossible okay. that's why you have to wear a gas mask your body kind of rejects the air it's pretty wild i just got blasted in the face with a sulfur cloud and it is not pretty it chokes you it's hard to breathe it feels like you're suffocating you have to wear a gas mask when you come here don't try to attempt it without one. It kind of sheds a little bit of light though on the workers that are here because a lot of them do not have gas masks and they're up here all the time. So it's honestly really sad to kind of see, but it's, I mean, it's the hardest job in the world. you go and see the blue flames in the crater you must come up to the rim to watch the sunrise the air is clean and the view is gorgeous
that you can see us a little bit better, just to wrap up and tell you a little bit more about the crater and the whole mining process in general. So the sulfur is mined in a pretty interesting way. So they put tubes down in the earth to basically collect the sulfur gas. What happens is the sulfur gas will condensate, turn into a kind of orange liquid, and then drip down into these sulfur pools, essentially, where when it hardens, it turns that bright yellow that we're all used to seeing, or like you saw in the footage. But what's crazy, like Jen mentioned, is those workers down there do not have masks. They do not have goggles. They're just going at it. The thing is, this stuff is heavy, too. So for them to bring loads in and out, sometimes twice a day up this crazy incline is just it's crazy I it's, mean, it's mind-boggling yeah. and the pay's not that much we've heard that it ranges anywhere from like five to twelve dollars a day if they're able to do two loads so i know that there's a lot of income disparity around the world there's people that make a little bit of money every day and people that make a lot of money every day but one commonality is that most of us don't have to worry about putting our lives on the line every day when we clock in. So think about that next time you find yourself complaining about your job. So if you're wondering what the sulfur is even used for, it is oftentimes used to bleach sugar, uh, make matches, and... Fertilizer. Yeah, so that's kind of the reason why it's there. Not really my top three favorite things on Earth. No, it's also used to make um, sulfuric acid as well. Egypt. It is a beautiful landscape and just a natural wonder that I think is absolutely worth going out of your way to see. Now what I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the acidic lake in the crater itself. The blue flames and the sulfuric gas, they're cool, but I could probably pass on that. I so, mean, it just kind of looks like a stove top. Yeah, and it you, you can't you can't breathe. So if you're an adrenaline junkie, sure. But here's what I would recommend. You don't have to get here at midnight. You can arrive here at seven in the morning, go for a nice little leisurely hike up in the daytime when you can see, and you will still get up there and have a gorgeous view of the crater. And you can still see the sulfur being processed in broad daylight if you like. Not only is the crater itself basically Egin, very cool but you also have this gorgeous view of multiple other volcanoes so that alone is worth it even if you're in good shape this is a workout no matter what the incline is bad the declines then, worse yeah so brace yourself for that definitely wear good tennis shoes don't you even begin to worry. There's uh, taxi services, if you will, which are guys pushing carts, and they charge 200,000 to go up and 200,000 to go down if that's your speed. What a day, what a day. All I can tell you is, my thighs are on fire. Dude, my shot, hot fire. Yeah. Shit's burning. Oh my God.